great to see you on this Monday night here on Closing Arguments. I'm Julie Grant sitting in tonight for Vinnie Politan. We begin this hour with Michigan teenager Jordan DeMay. Have you heard about this case? He tragically took his own life last year after becoming the victim of a sextortion scheme. The U.S. Attorney's Office says that sexual extortion or sextortion is a crime that can take many forms. Through various ruses and exploits, victims are lured to share compromising images or engage in compromising conversations. In all cases, the perpetrators use embarrassment and shame with a threat of disclosure to leverage what they want. The sextortion can then cause enormous stress and crisis for victims. And in May of this year, a federal grand jury indicted three men for their involvement in this particular scheme, as well as more than 100 others for other instances. Now, two of the men, brothers Samuel Ogoshi and Samson Ogoshi, have been extradited to the United States to face charges here. Our Scripps local affiliate, WXMI, has more. Jordan was an incredible young man. He um, loved to play sports. He played football. He played basketball. Just a, a real fun, loving kid. Jennifer Buda says her son Jordan had a smile that drew people in, and he was friends with everybody. Sadly, the 17-year-old took his life after becoming a victim of sextortion. So Jordan began talking to an individual on Instagram uh, in the evening of March 24th, 2022. All of the details of the conversation, you know, we don't know. They haven't been released to us. Um, but there, there was exchange of images. And then the suspects allegedly asked Jordan for money. She says they asked him for $1,000. He sent them $300 and they asked for more money. Jordan at, at some point in the, the early morning hours of March 25th, 2022, said that he was going to kill himself. And the suspects told, them, told him, uh, go ahead and kill yourself. And if you don't, I will, I will make you do it. The Nigerian nationals allegedly responsible, 22-year-old Samuel Ogashi and 20-year-old Samson Ogashi, were extradited to the U.S. Saturday after being indicted for an international sexual extortion ring. The extradition proceedings of a third defendant, 19-year-old Ezekiel Roberts, is underway. The indictment alleges that these defendants targeted more than 100 victims, both minors and adults. One of the victims in this case was 17-year-old Jordan DeMay from Marquette, Michigan, who tragically took his life as a result of this crime. The indictment includes four counts, including conspiracy to sexually exploit minors, conspiracy to distribute child pornography, and conspiracy to commit stalking through the internet. Samuel Ogashi is also charged with sexual exploitation and attempted sexual exploitation of a minor resulting in death and could face up to life in prison. Nigerian officials have separately charged three other individuals who they say were a part of a larger criminal scheme. So they're being transferred to the holding facility here in, in, uh, in Michigan. They'll be in the custody of the U.S. Marshal Service tomorrow. They'll have an initial appearance before a judge. Will be informed of, of the charges again, of the charges against them? Then they'll go to trial, although the timeline will depend on a judge. I, I am very, very grateful to our government, our FBI, their counterparts in Nigeria for the work that they did to make this happen and bring these individuals over here um, where they can, you know, face our justice system with their charges. Um, at the end of the day, though, none of it will bring my son back. Jennifer is keeping her son's legacy alive with one of his favorite sayings. One of the things that Jordan would say to people was, I got you. So what we did is we created a, a logo, which is hashtag I got you in capital letters. The logo can be found on shirts, hats, and hoodie. The money raised will go towards a scholarship fund each year at Marquette Senior High School, where Jordan used to attend. Jennifer encourages parents to talk with their kids about the reality of sextortion so that this tragedy doesn't happen to them. Please talk about it as a family. Um, have a plan in place if 
this does happen to your child. Um, and just keep those lines of communication open to let them know that no matter what they do, they can come to you or another trusted adult for help if they get themselves into a situation like this. Oh, isn't this heartbreaking? That young man with his whole life ahead of him, victimized in such a sick, sinister way. I want to bring in tonight's think tank to talk more about it. Joining us from Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. There he is, Al Wunsch the third. What's up, Al? In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, family law attorney Jennifer Brandt is with us. Welcome to you, Jennifer. And uh, thank you both for being on the program tonight. Great to see you. All right, uh, this is just, just so sad. My gosh, I, 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 I know I speak everybody watching this. Your heart breaks for the family, and and so now where do we go? Here we. We've got this prosecution. Al Wunsch, want to go to you on this. What do you think the likelihood is of the U.S. Attorney's Office having a successful prosecution against these guys? Well, it seems that they're off to a good start. I mean, they had enough evidence to get them extradited from Nigeria. So I've got to imagine that the case is fairly strong. Uh, and it's nice to see that Nigeria has uh, assisted us with this and is, is looking into it a little bit further because uh, this is horrific. This is a, 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 a beautiful family, a beautiful young man, and, and just getting ready to go to college, for God's sakes, and, and just for, put to a position where he ended up killing himself because of these, these horrendous individuals who decided to uh, uh, you know, sexually extort him. I mean, I think the charges are not even enough. I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, these people should never see the light of day again. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Al. I'm with you. Throw the book at these guys. I want to bring you in on this one, Jennifer Brandt, please. With the family, my gosh. We know we've got the criminal case going, but might they also be able to hold these scammers civilly liable as well, in your opinion? I would think so, Julie, but you know, how much money do they have? Can they ever repay enough to bring back a, a child who killed himself? I mean, they should be criminally prosecuted and, um, and they should be held out as an example to other families, to other people as to what can happen um, when kids are, are vulnerable on the internet and, and enter into these kind of discussions with unknown people. Um, it's, a, you know, as that mom pointed out, so tragic that she lost her son, but begging parents to please talk with their kids and make sure that these kind of things don't happen to, to other families. Um, make sure kids are educated, that they just can't speak to people on the Internet, no matter how innocent it seems and no matter who they may think they're speaking with. Um, you just never know. And, you know, not to send any kind of pictures or anything like that. Um, to anyone uh, over the internet because that can be used in such horrible and horrific ways as we see here. Right, you're absolutely right, Jennifer. There are so many different kinds of predators out there. You know, here they're preying on young people and they're trying to get money, but there could you know, be other types of crimes committed in the same type of fashion. I wanna bring in another guest on this point, joining us, criminal defense attorney Darnell Crossland is here too. Darnell, good to see you. Uh, would you Thanks. speak to that, please? You know, the types of crimes that can occur when someone, a young child or an adult, is communicating with someone online and they don't definitively know who they're talking with. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like leaving your front door open um, to strangers to walk in your house. And we've been having that problem uh, ever since the Internet uh, got popular. So uh, in one way, it's a great thing and it brings the world closer, but it also brings uh, predators closer to you. And so, so there's a lot of uh, uh, scholars that are dealing with Internet law and trying to find out what type of laws they can use to enforce um, uh, our, our rules that we have here at home even though the predators may be outside of the United States. So I think it's an evolving thing. And um, and we're also going to start with having the U.S. Attorney's Office be involved, but it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. No, uh, this is so sad. It, it, I want to go back to you, please, Al. Uh, you were saying it's just horrific what happened to this, this young teenager, 17 years old, his whole life ahead of him. Uh, and for someone who is 17, and I, I really want to make this point for any parents who might be at home uh, who have teenagers watching, you know, we know that social media is, is kind of their world. Reputation online uh, is, is so different for, for children who are growing up today versus, you know, 10 years ago 
ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, and so for anybody watching, any parents, we know uh, this dad you know, was so horrified and I like how he classified it. He said it was like my son was murdered in the middle of the night while we were all sleeping because of what these scammers were doing with him and boxing him in to think there was no other way out of this. Um, what advice do you have, please, Al, for any parents watching along um, in terms of monitoring what their kids are doing and letting them know that nothing is hopeless? But th there's nothing that justifies taking your own life uh, on something like this based on being you know, embarrassed or something along those lines. Express to your kids that, you know what, you love them regardless. If they made a mistake, they made a mistake. And there's nothing that would justify him just ending it all and, and taking away from his family, it looks like he has young uh, siblings, that it's not worth it. I think we have to sit with our uh, you know, teenagers and tell them, look, just like Jennifer said, it's a dangerous situation on the internet. It's not a, it's the wild west really. Mm -hmm. Anything goes, okay? So you have to be very careful on who you trust and who you don't trust. And just, if you don't see the person and you don't know the person, you can't trust the person. And that's what I would express. Yes. But I would also tell my son, if this was my son, I would say to him, listen, there's nothing you could do that would ever change my love for you. And there's nothing that you could do that would embarrass you so much that you won't get over it at some point in time and just live your life. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, Al. You know, one piece of advice I always give to you know my friends who have kids who are teenagers, it's all out there. Nothing is deleted or erased. It, it's you can't go back from. So don't take or send those pictures. And I understand it's you know, it's easier to give that advice and that it is for children to sometimes listen to that advice. Uh, but uh, don't do it. You never know who's the recipient or if they're going to try to do you harm. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there for now. But this is a case we're going to continue watching as this prosecution has commenced against uh, these said scammers.